Welcome everyone to this workshop. Uh, today we're going to go through the Schrodinger package uh, and uh, see what the package contains. And also we're going to go through the Maestro interface uh, and get to know it better. So um, the six main packages within the Bioluminate uh, package are uh, these six. So we have uh, resources. Schrodinger has a lot of users and they have a lot of materials. Um, for every package that they have, uh, they also have tutorials, a lot of PDF files that you can go through if you're interested. Uh, on schrodinger.com slash training, uh, they have all of their materials. So they have videos that you can watch, tutorials, webinars, and their Schrodinger online learning. Yes. So the tutorials then, the tutorials are uh, PDF files, basically step-by-step -step guides uh, that you can follow to learn how to do something. And then you can tweak it for your own uh, purposes or for your own system, once you know how to do it. All right, um, and this training of course is found in the main menu. When you enter the Schrodinger website, you can always find it at the top. So with that, uh, I thought that we could start the uh, Maestro uh, tutorial part of this workshop. So the way we're going to do it is I'm going to show you um, how to do various things and then you will try to do similar things on a different system. Uh, so the compendium contains step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, but for this first part, um, I'm going to show you and then you can choose to either follow the step-by-step -step guide in the compendium or you can just try clicking around on your own and try to figure out how it's done. For the second part, it's very important that you do follow the compendium because it's more complicated uh, and, and there is a risk that you will miss a step if you try to do it on your own. But we'll get to that later. Um, all right, so... Mastery Maestro. I'm going to close this down and open up my Bioluminate window. All right. So, um, most of the things that I'm going to say now, you can also find this information in the compendium. Uh, but just very briefly, uh, you can see my mouse, right? Okay, good. Uh, so, this top part here is the toolbar. So, this top part here, the black area is the toolbar. Here we have the shortcut bar, and this will look different for you if this is the first time uh, you install the software, because uh, the shortcut bar is something that you can customize yourself. Uh, these are the ones that I often use, so these are the ones that I have uh, put in my shortcut bar. Uh, basically, the way to put things in your shortcut bar is uh, if you go to tasks in the toolbar, you can search for something that you like to do, like measure, for instance, and you put a star uh, on it. I can unstar it and then it will disappear from the, from the bar. Or you can restart it and it will come back out again. Um, then we have the workspace navigator, which is this part here. Uh, and I'll show you in a minute why this part is useful. Then you have the main workspace, which is this black area here, which is empty until you load something into it. Um, and you have the footer bar. Uh, and the footer bar also contains the status bar, which is this part here, uh, where you can see uh, the properties of whatever it is you have in your workspace. And then at the bottom here, you will see the protein sequence once you have uh, loaded a protein into the workspace. These buttons here uh, are used to do some simple analyses, uh, like measure um, and look at interactions. And you see that if you hover over something, you will see this tooltip uh, information about that particular thing. All right, so let's get started with um, the protein. I am going to do an import. I'll go to this main menu up here, choose File, 
get PDB. Let me know if I'm going too fast. Um, where did it go? Ah, okay. So here you can just input the PDB that you want. In this case, I want the two MLR downloading it. So this one finds um, the PDBs from the RCSB database. So if it's there, it should be able to import it. So this PDB uh, contains uh, 14 different structures. I'm not interested in having 14 different structures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select 13 of them. Uh, and select is done by clicking left mouse and shift together and then right click to delete. So right clicking will open um, uh, your options. So delete these. And the reason I want to delete them is that otherwise they will take up my, my uh, memory, uh, the RAM. So now I might not be sure that this is the right one that I wanted to see. Uh, so to figure out what this is, we can look at the table up here, and it will give us all the information about this PDB. Uh, so you have the title, you have what type of PDB it is. We have a membrane bilayer complex with a metalloproteinase. Um, and Yeah, so today we're not going to be using this um, at all, I think. Uh, but I just wanted to show you what it is. All right, so here we have a membrane and a protein. Uh, I don't particularly like this view. I think it looks a little bit messy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the presets and I'm going to choose a different type of rendering. And you can play around with this uh, today and, and see what kind of rendering you prefer. Uh, and just, uh, you know, play around, explore, see, see what is offered. Um, so in this case, we have two different types of structures. We have the membrane and the protein. So if I want to, um, if I want to select just the membrane, there are different ways to do that. One is going up here uh, to the select um, toolbar. And here we can choose actually membranes. Uh, I'm not sure why my computer is so slow today. But, oh, it worked yesterday. All right, let's do it the other way. So you can see the, the distribution of the different types of uh, molecules in your system in this uh, menu here. So in this case, I looked at uh, the two different types of molecules. In this case, it's been categorized as protein and other. So in the other you see metals and ions and so on. In the protein you have uh, all the amino acids, but also uh, all the lipids. So the lipid in this case, you can, uh, you can select them by again clicking left mouse and shift. Uh, and then if you want to, you can change the style. Maybe you want to change the color. You can do that with this style bar here. Whatever helps you distinguish the features that you're interested in, it will help. All right, uh, so once I've done that, maybe I'm interested in one particular um, lipid in this case, and I want to highlight it so I can see it. Uh, so maybe I'll make it pink. See that there's a pink thing here, and maybe I want to make it 
stand out more. I could change the the rendering of the uh, the representation to make it thicker or thinner, uh, depending on my preference. All right. So now we played around with uh, what it looks like, uh, and now maybe we want to make some changes to this particular molecule. To begin with, I'm going to focus on this uh, on this lipid. So I'm going to use this um, this button here, which is fit view. Um, and then I'm going to zoom. And zooming is done with uh, the middle button. And you'll you'll try this out for yourself so you see how, how it's done. All right. Uh, so I said that maybe I want to do some changes to this molecule. Uh, this is done by um, choosing first the atoms that I want to make changes to. Maybe I just want to delete one atom. Then I will pick the atom I want to delete. And then I will go to the build menu. So the build menu has all the tools you need to actually make changes to anything that you want. So in this case, I wanted to delete something. I'm deleting this, this atom. And like I said before, if you hover over something, you'll see what it does. I will delete this one. And it will automatically just add the hydrogens onto, uh, onto the next uh, atom. Uh, let's say I want to make a change to uh, the atom type. You can do that here as well. Uh, I want to change it to an oxygen. There we go. Uh, and then up here, I have, uh, if you don't know what it is, you can hover over it, over the atom, and then you will see down here uh, what atom it is. So in this case, you see it's a P, so it's a phosphorus. Uh, I want to change it for um, a sulfur. Now it's a sulfur. And then I want to add a double bond. Uh, so when you want to add bonds, you don't click the, the atom, you click on the bond itself, and you will notice that both, both atoms around the bond will get highlighted. And then you can just add, uh, add a bond. All right, so that's a lot of information to take in. I realize that. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to try it for yourselves now. Um, so what I'd like you to do is to import the protein 1Q4G, find the inhibitor and render it in balls and sticks, and change the color of the inhibitor to make it stand out. So three very fairly uh, basic operations that you will tend to do quite often when you open things up in Schrodinger. Um, and then try to answer the following questions as you explore. 